What's up everyone? This is Mike Benarski on behalf of Wohotech.com and today we're going to talk about all of the new features that are collected across of all of the beta versions of iOS 4.3. So basically we're combining all the new features that we found in iOS 4.3 beta 1, beta 2, and beta 3. So this will give you a better idea of what to expect when iOS 4.3 is released. So let's get started right away by talking about the first new feature, Personal Hotspot. So first of all, Personal Hotspot will only be available to Verizon iPhone users. Currently, AT&T does not support the Personal Hotspot feature. So if you are a Verizon iPhone user, when iOS 4.3 comes out, you will be able to take advantage of the Personal Hotspot feature. What it basically does is it tethers your 3G connection and it transmits it as a Wi-Fi connection. So if you have a Wi-Fi only device, it can connect to your iPhone and your iPhone will share the 3G connection. This is really nice if you're traveling a lot and you have a laptop and you don't have like a USB 3G or 4G adapter. Um, you just use your iPhone and use the personal hotspot feature and your laptop will connect to your iPhone and will basically be running off of Verizon's 3G service. Again, AT&T currently does not support this, and if you have an unlocked iPhone, your carrier must support tethering. Also, if you are a Verizon customer, this will cost um, some extra money per month in order to use, so it's not like I'm a Verizon user and I have the Verizon iPhone so I can use Personal Hotspot. You do have to pay an additional fee per month if you want to use it. If you do not pay to, you do not need to pay the fee, but if you don't, you will not be able to use Personal Hotspot. So the second new feature that we found in iOS 4.3 was full screen banner iAds. So iAds were introduced back in iOS 4.0, and they it, they gave developers a much easier way to add advertisements to their applications. Well, now, in iOS 4.3, um, a lot of the advertisements are now going to be full screen, which is a new feature, a new API in iOS 4.3. A major improvement comes in iOS 4.3 to AirPlay. So before iOS 4.3, AirPlay could only be used in Apple apps, such as the Videos app. Well, now developers can choose to put uh, AirPlay support inside of their app. So, for example, if Netflix decides to put AirPlay in the Netflix app, then you can transmit the Netflix video to your Apple TV or an AirPlay-ready device. So it's also a nice feature. Uh, it gives uh, app developers a uh, easier route to transmitting that video to another device. And also, AirPlay will become available in Safari. So if you are watching, for example, a QuickTime video through Safari that you found on a website, uh, the website developer can choose to add AirPlay support. And if they do, that video that you are watching uh, can be transmitted to your Apple TV. So another feature we see, uh, which is AirPlay Ready, is the iPhone of an iPod Touch 4th generation video app or camera app. When you take videos, however, uh, it used to be when you took a video that you would have to sync to iTunes in order for that video to become AirPlay compatible. Well now, if you record a video on your iPhone or iPod, that video will instantly become AirPlay compatible. So that's also a nice feature that Apple decided to throw in. On the iPod Touch 4th generation, there is a little front-facing camera. This is the 3rd generation, but the 4th generation has a front-facing camera right there, and uh, that is for FaceTime. Well, the FaceTime icon has been changed to something similar to the Mac FaceTime icon. Now, the iPhone FaceTime icon, I believe, has remained the same. It is just the iPod Touch FaceTime icon that has changed.
So the camera shutter sound on the iPhone and iPod Touch has also changed. It's a very subtle change, but if you played them like the old shutter sound and the new shutter sound one after another, you could definitely tell there is a difference. It's very subtle, but I actually do like the newer one better. It's a little more uh, metallic, if you will. So another feature in iOS 4.3 is your missed FaceTime calls will now appear in your status bar. Uh, they'll look like a video camera with a line going through it. So that will symbolize a missed FaceTime call. So another feature that some developers have found in iOS 4.3 is a feature called Find My Friends. It has not really been officially announced by Apple, but uh, developers have been able to pull enough information about it and so it looks like it's going to be an application that allows you to connect to other people's iPhones and iPods and iPads and see exactly where they are via their either Wi-Fi by the IP address they can locate that way or through the GPS connection. So um, that is obviously a nice feature if you like are part of a large family and you're trying to keep track of your, of your son or your daughters and see where they are uh, keep track of everyone so obviously that does bring a privacy issue and so as a result of that they have also changed the location settings location settings are now available uh, directly on the main screen of the settings menu they used to be buried in some other location that no one could find but now they're really accessible it's right here uh, on iPod touch it's the last one on iPhone, I believe it is the second last one. I'm not certain about that. But it is there in this first group of options is location services. So it's a lot easier to get to now. Alright, so some developers that were going through the coding of iOS 4.3, they found some coding that maybe hinted towards an iPad 2 and an iPhone 5. So it's unconfirmed, but there is some coding in iOS 4.3 that hints towards compatibility with iPad 2 and iPhone 5. And with iOS 4.3, uh, Apple has again stopped updates for some other devices. So Apple stopped updating some uh, devices when iOS 4.0 came out. And now with iOS 4.3, Apple has now dropped the iPod Touch 2nd generation and the iPhone 3G. So there will be no more iOS updates for those two devices. Another feature in iOS 4.3 is there is a new font for the Notes app. So back in iOS 4.2, the Notes app received some fonts. And you could change the fonts by going to Settings and scrolling down here to Notes. Well, if you'll notice, in iOS 4.2, the three fonts were Chalkboard, Helvetica, and Markerfelt. In iOS 4.3, Chalkboard is replaced with Noteworthy. So I'll show you what Noteworthy looks like. We'll launch the Notes app. And here is a note, Inception. So that is what uh, Noteworthy looks like. So it's actually a very nice looking font. Uh, looks more realistic writing wise. Whereas uh, chalkboard, it, it looked very computerized. Uh, it was very sloppy, and you know, some a lot of times handwriting is sloppy, but it looks sloppy on purpose. So uh, this font uh, looks a lot more realistic uh, handwriting wise. So in the iPhone, it is iPhone only, in the Photos app, the photo slideshow settings have been moved. For some reason, that changes only on iPhone. But they used to be, the slideshow settings used to be in Settings, Photos, and here are Slideshow Settings. Well, on the iPhone, now those settings are available directly via the Photos app. So, again, Apple making things a little more accessible and easier to find. 
So another uh, new feature, it's not really a feature, it's just a uh, user interface change, is the App Store updates. If you go to App Store updates, uh, the updates tab is going to look a little different. It, it has a whitish background and the icons are a little bit bigger. I cannot show you that right now because I don't I don't have the right version of iOS 4.3. Um, but when the final version comes out, I'll make a video uh, as well, and I'll show you that. It's not really a big deal. There, there aren't any new features or anything. It works the same way. It's just that the icon and text is a little bit bigger, and it's on a white background. Alright, so, again, some developers were sneak, sneaking in iOS 4.3 to find some very subtle changes. And one of those changes they found was in the iPad, those wallpapers that come pre-installed. If you go to settings, and then wallpaper. All these wallpapers that come pre-installed with your device. On the iPad, they've noticed that they are now of a higher resolution. Which everyone is now saying that that pretty much confirms that the iPad 2 will have a retina display. Which is pretty much the only reason why there would be a high re higher resolution wallpaper uh, out there. So when iOS 4.1, I believe it was, came out, the side switch on the iPad changed. So when the iPad originally shipped out, the side switch, which is located on the right side of the device, it used to act as a rotation lock. Well, in iOS 4.1, that changed to a mute switch, which many people absolutely hated because they said, well, the iPad isn't a phone, so why would you ever want a mute switch? And I pretty much agree. I don't really know why anyone would want a mute switch on the iPad. It, would, it, it just makes a lot more sense for it to be a rotation lock. Well, now in iOS 4.3, Apple has made it an option to change the uh, setting for the side switch. So now you have the choice of the side switch acting as a mute switch or a rotation lock. On the iPhone, you can now set how many times you are reminded for a text message. So you can choose from one to ten times that your iPhone will remind you, and it will remind you in two minute intervals. For example, if you set your iPhone to remind you five times for a text message, it basically means that every two minutes it will remind you, it will play your ringtone again, uh, and it will do that five times until, and after five times it will just stop reminding you. So a really uh, well liked feature that was added was the ability to cancel application downloads. So I'm going to demonstrate that. So basically what happened was if you were downloading an application and something seriously went wrong or you changed your mind about the application, if something went wrong, that app's icon was on your home screen but you couldn't get rid of it and you uh, couldn't open it, it wasn't installed because the installation completely screwed up, but you couldn't get it off your home screen because if you put your applications in wiggle mode, I like to call it, there will be no X. So like it'll kind of be like the some of these pre-installed apps like, like the Mail app, All, any of these apps down here, it would be like that. There would be no X on it in order to uh, delete the application because it was not installed, so it was like where are you going to delete? Well, now you can cancel application downloads. And so I'm going to show show you that. So there's an application here in the App Store. And so I'm going to go ahead and install it. And it is asking me to sign in to my Apple ID. All right, I've signed in to iTunes, and it is starting to download the application. As you can see, the blue bar is making its way slowly across the screen. 
All right. So I changed my mind. I don't want this app. Maybe I accidentally downloaded it. I thought I was downloading another app. I don't know. But I changed my mind. Or maybe I lost my internet connection and it stopped installing. Well, I can easily get rid of it by putting the application in wiggle mode and then tapping the X. Now, this used to not be an option uh, in previous versions. If an application was still downloading or is not fully downloaded and you put the application in wiggle mode, that X would not appear. And the only way to get the icon off your screen was to restart your device. So now it's a lot easier to get rid of that icon or to cancel the entire download. So the last feature that we're going to talk about here is the keyboard. Because so some keyboards are bring up a little transparent. That is basically the point I was trying to get across. They're not real transparent. It's the idea of blackish part in the back. It's not like the keys are transparent, but like in between the keys, it's a little transparent. So not a big tweak, but you know, a tweak. And uh, some people have reported that the keyboard is actually a lot more responsive than in previous versions. All right, so that basically does it for the new features in iOS 4.3. And so one thing I actually wanted to touch on was the iPad gestures. That was actually a really big thing. That came out in iOS 4.3 beta 2. Uh, and basically it allowed you with five, four or five fingers, if you swiped up, it revealed the uh, multitasking bar like that. If you swiped to the right or left, it will uh, switch apps according to the according to the order in your multitasking bar. Or if you were in an open app and you pinched inward, the app would close and go back to the home screen. Well, a lot of people, this was on iPad only, and a lot of people like loved the loved the uh, functionality of being able to do all that uh, without having to go to your home button. Well. After people were hyped up about it, Apple released a statement saying that they were for er experimental purposes only and they are not going to be released in the final version of iOS 4.3. So basically Apple just wanted to see how people responded to the gestures. Uh, but they weren't really planning on releasing them in the final version. Well obviously Apple got a good response because Everybody loved them, and everyone's bummed that they're not going to be in iOS 4.3. Maybe Apple will change their mind about that decision since everybody loves them, but we'll see. Uh, but a lot of the speculation is that the next iPad, the iPad 2, will not have a home button. Um, it'll Just everything will be controlled on screen, and so in order to get back to your home screen, you would pinch in and stuff like that. So that's a lot of the speculation that there will be a buttonless iPad. And then uh, other people are saying that there's going to be a buttonless iPhone and iPod. I doubt that'll happen because, you know, I could barely fit five fingers on my screen. So, uh, a cool thing would be if they would add, like, a touch-sensitive touch button instead of, like, a hard button. It would be, like, touch-sensitive, so if I would touch it, it would go back. That would be a cool thing that I would like. But, anyways... Uh, that actually brings me to my next point uh, about the iPad 2 rumors. Uh, next week uh, is rumored that Apple is going to have a special event, and it's uh, anticipated that Apple will be talking about iOS 4.3, and it is also rumored that Apple will be announcing the iPad 2. So everyone is going to be uh, watching very closely to see if that actually happens. And so, of course, stay tuned to wohotech.com, and we'll keep you updated about all of, all of those Apple happenings next week, and to actually see if there will be an iPad 2 announcement, which should be very exciting. It is said that if there is an iPad 2 announcement next week, that it should have a release in March. So we'll see what happens with that. So again, stay tuned to wohotech.com for all of that latest information. So, I'm MikeBed96 here on behalf of WohoTech.com. Have a good day.